And what is that product called? So this was the Evian spray. <clears throat> I just like to put a little bit of a little bit of water down, so that as I apply moisturizer or serums, it really gives something to pour into the skin. Now I'm going to prep your skin <clears throat> with just a couple lightweight products. Really, <clears throat> the first one I'm going to use is called Sotox, and this is from our Limelight line. Oh, nice. Sotox is kind of like the, uh, you know, natural yeah. skin tightening and firming and spot lightening serum from the line. But I find it can also be used really easily just as like a lightweight daytime oh, moisturizer. Oh, it smells so good. Oh yeah, and the smells of the entire oh, line are incredible. Goodness. We were talking about your line, like, not, um, line. and now Cone Company, um, they have organic products, correct? Yep. Yep, so that's what I'm using hey. right now is the, uh, the Sotox, which is a Sonji mushroom based serum. And it feels great. recommend this that every person that puts on makeup you know puts these products before putting actual makeup yeah I definitely definitely think it's really important to have a good skincare product routine before you put your makeup on it's gonna help your when your skin is in the best state makeup's always gonna apply better it's gonna go on smoother you're gonna see less texture you're gonna have that plumper look to the skin that more healthy hydrated look and that's going to allow you to use less makeup also because you have less you have less to cover up because you've corrected what the actual issue is you know yeah cool so let's start with a little foundation i just pull out a few tones because you know i just don't want to use that color off the top of my head so we can play um and then what i'm going to do is use a touch of the skin therapist which is the pomegranate base and oat base moisturizer and what i like to do is mix a little bit of this into your color Hey, welcome, how's it going? Uh, mix a little bit of this in, and then it's gonna help us to shear out the foundation that we're using. Can you show that to my viewers? I think that's yep. amazing. So I just scooped out a few different tones. So, okay, great. So what I like to do when I'm going in with foundation is you already have beautiful skin, so I don't wanna go in and cover everything up because there's not going to be a need to do that. It's going to be wasting product, really, if we're covering up areas that don't need to be covered up. And then it's going to take you more time to do your makeup if you're using you know, products where you don't necessarily need to. So I like to just get in there and just do sheer layers, really. Feels great. And right now, the foundation I'm using is from a brand called Le Maquillage. Professional. <laughs> it's an amazing French brand that we've recently picked up. And the foundations I really like from them just because they're, you can really make them your own. You can sheer them out, you can build them up, you can easily mix them together. That's what I was going to ask you. Um, you can mix foundation together. Yeah, definitely. I never knew that. Because I'm not really, I don't put foundation. I mostly put blush, but mm -hmm. as I'm getting older, guys, I think foundation's good. <laughs> <laughs> Having the camera in your face, I think we all need foundation. <laughs> right, and that's what, and that's why even when I'm when I'm doing makeup, it's not for me. It's not so much about you know a lot of makeup or a lot of foundation, but more of just a precise placement and use of your product. And this is a daytime look. Um, yeah. And this look would also be good if you're gonna go to an interview. Somebody's gonna interview you. You know, the workplace. Yeah, and that's what I love to create for women is a look that you can rock every day that's not going to be so over the top that it's going to look inappropriate in certain situations. The kind of look that you can build on if you want to make it more dramatic before you go out at night. Mm -hmm. But it's still the kind of look that even if you threw on a really nice dress and had your hair done, you'd look really polished and beautiful without even having to add or bump up the makeup. So mm -hmm. just a really versatile look. I'm just going to wet the sponge a little bit and go through and start to just kind of press and stipple into the skin the foundation that we put on. So it's very important to press it, right? 
Yeah. For me, it's really important because what happens is we've worked so hard to achieve the proper placement of the product that we want to use that I don't want to go through and just start swiping it and moving it all around. Now. That's how I used to do it. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like that's just kind of... <laughs> Everybody needs yeah, when people you do it then. Yep, if you are trained on you know a different technique or a different way, you see this brush and it looks like you just want to swipe it across. Um, do you but, think it's good always to start the foundation with a good brush? Yeah, I like to, but even sometimes you'll see, I'll, I mix my tools, so I will go in and, and use my finger if I want to stip a little bit more coverage into a certain area. And then I'll a lot of times go in back in with that sponge to really just get that, that product melted into the skin. Yeah, so I've heard people say, oh, you should always use a brush for foundation. Um, and I don't think it's true. And you're put, putting very little foundation. Right? Yeah. Yeah, how does your skin feel? Oh, it feels amazing. Good. Yeah, that's what I like. I like for, for a person to walk away and not feel the makeup on themselves. So that way they're not thinking about it so much. What do you think is the biggest mistake most people do when they put on their own makeup? I feel like the biggest mistakes I see is overusing foundation when the skin starts to look cakey, starts to look heavy. Also, if you're following a lot of like the um, kind of the internet trend makeups, sometimes I'll notice people just didn't quite blend it as much as they needed to, or you see a little bit more of that placement and it starts to look a little bit more like a color by number rather than like a really beautiful natural makeup application. Um, that, and then sometimes I'll see mistakes with concealer where they went a little bit too light or maybe didn't have the correct color and then all of a sudden it starts to give a little bit of a, a dif different color cast, a discoloration below the eye. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I'm not really one for rules, so... You like to break the rules, yeah. Jacob? Yep. So, you know, it's like... If you like it, if it feels good, if it looks good, if it makes you feel confident, then Go I, for it. Then I generally support it, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big hater. Like, um, you know, like I am not either, Jacob. I think that's what we got along with. <laughs> yeah, right? Because there, so right. there are so many trends with makeup and new things happening, and especially with you know, the world of social media getting so big, I find that there's a lot of artists out there who um, have negative things to say about some of the trends that are going on. But to me, it's just kind of like, if you walk the same way to work every day, you're going to get bored, right? So sometimes you take a different street, even though it might take you a little bit longer, just because you need to have a little switch up in your routine. So that's how I kind of feel about makeup and what happens with the internet trends and the contour trends. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's for everybody, but for me, if it makes somebody happy while they're doing it and it gets them excited and passionate about life and their life, why? Like, why hate on them, you know? Why trash them? If it makes them happy and it's not hurting you, <laughs> I love color. I'm really into color. I love um, putting colors, um, eyeshadows. Uh -huh. I love purple and green, especially that it's summer right now. I love to play with colors. And you have such a great skin tone to add color, and especially with having such dark hair, color works so good on that because it really can enhance like browns and eyes and it can really contrast so well against a really deep like black hair color like you have. So mm -hmm. I think it's such a great tool for you to use to really enhance what you already have on your features. Who do you like right now? Who's your favorite celebrity? Are you a Kardashian fan? Um, Let's see, favorite celebrity right now in terms of makeup. Making. You know what I do? I love, JLo's always got a great look. She does. She has a great look. Um, Can't wait to interview next, Jane. <laughs> right? Um, I really like Miley Cyrus makeup a lot of times because I feel like she wears her makeup in a way that is simple and stunning, I, where it doesn't look overdone, but you always notice some kind of beautiful feature about her makeup. Her eyes and her lashes. Yes. That's what I love. And I love how she puts the pop, like the pop of red. Oh, yep. And then she doesn't put no eyeshadow. It's just all about the lashes with her. Yeah. It's very natural. She's, she's beautiful. Yeah. I just like she's beautiful. You know, a natural beauty, so she doesn't even need that much. Right. Go. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to mix a little bit of like 
orange corrector here with a little bit of a highlight. And you'll notice I had sanitized my hands from the beginning because I of really course. like to work off my hands, um, especially with foundations. I really like to just kind of start to get them warmed up, malleable, so that makes it a lot easier. Look straight up for me. So it makes it a lot easier and smoother in the actual application process. It already has the warmth from the skin, which is going to make it melt and blend into your skin. How long have you been a makeup so. artist? I've been doing makeup for 12 years. I started off as an esthetician, so I learned all about skincare, facials, bone structure, facial. muscles. Oh my gosh, me too. <laughs> um, I think it's very important that you know you get a facial done once a month. Yeah, taking care of your skin is going to pay off tenfold in the long run. You know what problem, one problem that I always have putting on makeup myself is blush. I don't know how to apply blush well. Oh, I'll show I you I'm very particular about blush. I so think I'll sometimes be. I do a little bit of the... Straight up again. You do a little bit of the what? Just take the brush and just put a little bit everywhere. And my mom is like, oh my goodness, what did you do? And then I just take <laughs> it off. It doesn't look horrible, but you know, I know that um, you could do so many highlights with blush, correct? Yeah, you, you can, can highlight your face with blush, is that correct? Well, yeah, depending on the blush of the color, you know? Because truly blush is meant to give you that flush of color in your cheeks to really kind of mimic the complexion undertones that come through the skin, you know, when you're... When you're you're so gentle and you're so soft and <laughs> I feel so relaxed right now. Good, good. Yeah, you know, that's also important to me too is you have to think about the, the model that you're working on this is their skin. It's the largest organ in our body and it's sensitive. So I think it's really important to have that light conscious touch. And remember that you're working on a human and not, <laughs> this isn't just a piece of paper canvas. Yeah. I never used to wear makeup, but as I'm getting a little older and you know, interviewing people, I, I think makeup is very, very important and doing photo shoots as well. So. Yeah. You don't want to look pale. <laughs> right? Nope. You don't want to look too colorful. So here, pick up the mirror and I'm going to show you how I would apply the blush on you. So I'm doing kind of a pinky coral color, right? This is blush right here? Yeah, it's cream blush. Cream blush? Yep. I've never heard oh of Oh my god, I love cream has, blush. Has this I been love out? It. Yes. Yep. For, for how long? Years. <laughs> <laughs> I need to start learning. Years. Wow. But it's never been very popular until the past couple of years it started to gain popularity. Um, you know, especially like 80s, early 90s, the whole look was a more softer look, well, softer texture, which a lot of times comes from the softness of a powder. Um, but to me, cream blush just blends into the skin. It looks like it's coming from within, and creams tend to just wear a little bit longer than powders. So what I'm going to do is I start about two finger lengths away from the nose, okay. and then I don't have the person smile. Because if you think about it, if you start smiling and you place it, what happens when you stop smiling? Then your placement goes from here down to here. So I always just go in exactly where I'm going to want that color to be. Pop a little bit on the apple of the cheek. And then I like to go through with the brush that I used for the foundation and start to just blend that out, blend out the edges of it. So just putting it all over is not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends because everybody's different. You know, it depends on the look that you want. Um, but if you, but what I'm giving you is that, you know, just kind of like that 15 minute daytime. daytime look where you look polished and you can kind of, you know, go to anywhere. Fresh. Yeah, fresh. Look, look fresh. Now, if you're someone who wants, if you want a focus on your makeup, then yeah, you know, you could bring that blush all the way up and around and really have the blush be the focus element of your makeup but since today we're doing more of just like a any woman any time of day could do this is going to be the placement that's going to work best for that is keeping it on a higher apple of the cheek softly blending out the edges so you don't really see where the makeup starts or stops mm -hmm. so it really just looks like that beautiful flush from within when you're just out on a hot day or you see some cutie on the street and they smile at you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, when you have your makeup on, you're 
gotta be confident. It's very important. True. 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 What do you think is the hardest thing applying makeup? Do you think the blush is harder or putting foundation? Um, probably the foundation. It's not so much that it's harder for me. Um, it's more thought required to it. Well, you're a makeup artist, but like to an everyday girl like me. Um, so for an everyday girl, if you have somebody who's supported you, who's helped you pick out your foundation color, then the blush part might actually be the more difficult part. Because your blush can really change the look of your face. I, I love how you did this right here. This is amazing. So if you put your blush too low, it actually makes your face look mm -hmm. like it's sagging down. Wow, I didn't yep. know that. Yep, so that's why I find the placement of blush is, is really important because it can change the whole look of your face. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, even right now, before we've powdered or took away shine, like you just have this fresh look to you. You have a healthy glow to the skin. Now you're sh you're more shiny all over than I'm going to want to finish. But we'll get into the mattifying um, of specific sections in just a minute. Can I see you turn to me for a sec? Great. Thank you. Boom, boom. Now clean my hand up. Now that we've got the skin yes, looking the good. the softest hands ever, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we've got the skin looking good, I feel like I have a really nice clean canvas, and we can go anywhere from here. And this really helps me to see what I want to create. Um, let's just take off this lipstick. Thank you. Yeah. And what was, what was that product, my dear? That is, oh, that's my favorite makeup remover, Kogendo Cleansing Spa Water. Amazing. It doesn't taste bad either, guys. Yeah, no, it's a lightweight, water-based makeup remover. You can take off some of the heaviest duty makeup and just lightweight makeup, and it doesn't dry out the skin. It just leaves the skin feeling just really soft, refreshed, natural. I love your products. It smells great. And like you said, it feels light. Yeah, I feel like the days of heavy feeling makeup and heavy looking makeup are behind us. Yeah, I have to put foundation that has thick, like I feel like it's too thick, you know? Once you take it out from the jar, I'm like, this is just too thick. Yeah. So now what we're doing is giving you just some color and depth to the eyebrows. You have great brows, great shape. Hey, how's it going? Welcome. Yeah. Great Hi. brows, great shape. Um, and so if we're doing a quick look, I'm definitely not going to spend the time to go through and really fill them in with um, pencils and with powders. Uh, because you have a good shape, we can really just use this brow gel. I'm using one from Blink, is the brand. And it's just going to help to groom your brows into place, adds a little, a little bit of color. And you can even see it's just a subtle difference, but it looks polished. Super quick with only one product, right? That's a difference. I'm loving the 15 minute makeover. Yeah, and that's the fun thing about, you know, creating a challenge like that, even if it's just for yourself and your daily thing, is it's, it really causes you to focus on the key elements of the face. So cleaning up the skin, making sure the brow looks great, getting a good lash in. I think eyebrows and lashes are everything to me. Like if my eyebrows yeah. are a mess, <laughs> I don't feel right. Yeah. yeah. So this gave my eyebrows a little bit of color, very light. Yeah, yep. So if you were to see it has just a really like deep taupey brown tone. Right? I didn't want, even though your hair and your brows are black, I knew if I went in with black, it would be really harsh. You know, it would I look tried really harsh. my <laughs> With black? <laughs> you have a picture. Please. <laughs> no, this was in the house. This was in the house. I was not going out like this. I was like, let me blank. I was like, what a horrible job. Because if I put black, it looks too black. Like, like. Yeah. It looks fake. Like yeah. something is not right. Yeah, right. it starts to really make it just look overdone when overdone, you're back in the brows. 
Okay, great. So now, now let's get some mascara on. When it comes to curling your lash, do you want me to do it, or are you more comfortable doing it on your own? I can do it. Okay, great. So I'll just have you look right about here at the opening of my shirt. I'm just going to place it before I look down a little bit more. Am I pinching you? Nope. Okay. Do you think it's very important to curl your eyelashes or then put the mascara or you just go through the mascara? Um, so when I'm doing a fast look like what we're doing, I do find it important to curl the lash uh, because it's going to have a big impact at the end. So it's one of those things that, yeah, it is like a 20 second process that we're working with that's gonna add to the timing. But even before we put mascara, look at the difference in your lashes. Great. You know, I haven't curled this one yet and we have curled this one. I have curled, I curled mine before coming. Why do you think they didn't come out that? Is um, it the tool? Yeah, the tool makes a big difference. <laughs> it does, and that's why it's tough because you get, and here's the thing, I'm not about all expensive products. I'm very highs and lows. Like even right now, I'm using the L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara, which is like a $10 mascara, but it gives me a really good result. When it comes to the lash curler though, the one that I love the most is the Kevin Aquan curler, and it's a $25 curler. So yeah, you can go to the drugstore and get one for nine, and it's gonna give you some curls, but it's not gonna do what, you know, the slightly more expensive one is. So open it up straight to the ground. But then also you didn't apply mascara this morning, right? No. Yeah, and so that's gonna make a difference too. Because although your lash does have a little bit of curl to it already, since you didn't apply any mascara, it's not gonna have anything to any product to hold that curl. What's your favorite lipstick color? My favorite lipstick color? Ooh, probably depends on the season. I'm such a red lip guy. I love, love, love red lips. Yep. That's definitely my ultimate look down here. Um, however, in different seasons and with different skin tones too, because one red's not gonna look great on everybody, you know? So sometimes I love these like oxbloods, these berries, and then I really do love these deep wine colors and deep fuchsias. Oh, that's all right. Oh my gosh, your lashes are amazing. I have to see. Yeah, let me just clean up close for one sec. Hey, you okay, great. Yeah, look up to the light. That way I can get, get your eyelashes and get your catch light. Oh, you know, hold on. If you want to get a real good lash shot, let me do one more thing. Uh, can I try, can you grab me the, um, like the metal lash comb? I don't know that I have one up here. I'm feeling sexy, guys, <laughs> and I have nowhere to go. <laughs> I'm working right now, but I'm having a great let me, time. Let me just grab this little boomer. I think lashes is so important. I, I um, Betty Boom, Marilyn Betty Monroe, sure. Kim Kardashian, Jennifer Lopez, they restaurant. always have their lashes so curled. It makes a woman feel sexy. <laughs> when we look good and when we feel sexy, our moods change, right? Seriously, absolutely. Look down for me. So I'm just going to go through with a little lash groomer tool. And then get in there and just comb out any clumps or anything that's stuck together. So we can get a really beautiful, nice, full, and still separated lash. Look at me. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Look up towards the light. Go ahead and look down here again. Am I pinching it? Okay. <laughs> and also, I hold it here for about 10 seconds, right? And then as I start to pull off, I pull off as I'm still pumping it. 
So we're getting curl throughout the entire lash, not just at the base of the lash. Yeah. I love her eye makeup was always so good. And she never had, you know, color. She didn't play a lot that much with color. Unless it was that red lip. It was that red lip <laughs> and that natural mm -hmm. look. And her blush always looked awesome. Breathtaking. But yeah, and that's totally getting back to like what I was saying, but I love that simple, that stunning makeup where it's like just you have one element that really draws your attention and everything else just looks so beautiful and polished. So much so that you might not even realize it unless you're really studying the makeup. You really start to focus on the beauty of the woman rather than on the makeup. Close. And that's really how I think about makeup is what can this makeup do to enhance what is already there? Look up for me. Makeup has such a power to change a face, to change the look of a face, and I love that aspect about it. But for me, when I'm doing makeup, especially for, you know, an everyday person who doesn't want to change the look of their features, that's when to me it's really important to um, just have clean and beautiful makeup looked on for me. agree that it's the occasion you know like if it's new year's you can have fun oh definitely are you going out with the girls you know but i think um maybe a first date this would be wonderful yeah yep yeah. yeah. Take Jacob home. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you listen to? What kind of music you're into? Um, wow, it ranges. Um, yeah. It really does. I, I like. God, it ranges from anything from Mumford and Sons to Robin to the XX to. Are you a Mighty Science fan? Um, I don't. I'm, I just because I'm not exposed to it because I don't have a radio. I don't hear that much pop music, honestly. Okay. So I'm all my stuff more comes from like my friends' referrals, bands that I've always liked that I get suggestions from, and then especially with Pandora. Cool when came in. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like you, I just I get I can get really inspired by music. <laughs> Do you like to work time. with music? Oh yeah, yes, okay. I love to work with music. I'll bring a speaker on set with me a lot of times too. Um, if I'm just working on. You know, a job and have you done models before? Oh, tons. Oh, yeah. How tons about fashion of week? Fashion week, yep. Dumb shows, oh, peed yeah. shows. Any celebrities? Celebrities, yep. Worked with celebrities, used to work consistently with the singer and models and done theater and some Broadway stuff. You have a sister because your sister would be like really blessed. I do, yep. I even done, she got diagnosed with breast cancer a few oh, years wow. ago, which was a hard pill to swallow. But um, but I really try to look at the bright side and everything. And I ended up uh, going to visit her, and we did. Um, I helped her to shave her head, and then we did a whole photo shoot around it, and it was oh really, it was amazing. It was a really beautiful moment to share with her. That is so. Oh my goodness. And she, Don't I love you. it because she's such a makeup girl. So uh, it's so she's awesome too. She's better now? Yeah, yep. She's in remission and now we got it taken care of. You got to show me that. Oh, I'll show you. What did you do right here? So this is a translucent powder, right? No color to it. But what I use it for, since I've already perfected the color of your skin tone, I don't want to go through and change it with a color powder. So I just use this mostly around the hairline, in the T-zone, side of the nose, right, to take away that extra shine so you don't look oily. But I still leave some of that natural sheen, some of that glow on the high parts of the cheekbone, um, and even a little bit down here, because that way it still looks like you. It doesn't look like your entire face is, you know, all shiny or all matte, because it's not going to be the most flattering look. Skin feels great right now. Good. 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 Okay. 
So now, I think honestly what we could do is, let's put down a little bit of lip color. Oh, and you're a red lip girl, right? No, let's do it. It looks so awesome with your outfit today. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do to finish off like our little 15 minute look, and to have that kind of simple and stunning and relatable makeup, we'll put a pop of color on the lip. But then if you want to take it a step further, I'll totally give you a little color liner or something pop out on the eyes too. Mm -hmm. Something that won't compete with the lip color, but rather complement it and work really well with it. So this one is called Cherry Pie, and it's a long wearing, Cherry pie, nice. yeah, long wearing uh, liquid lipstick that dries down to a matte. Do you like li li liquid lipstick more than? Um, it totally depends, actually. I don't have necessarily have a preference. It depends on what I'm creating and who okay. it's for. Yeah, because sometimes there's just. Because you do like that Lady Gaga makeup. Yeah, yeah. I've actually worked on one uh, one of her videos and a couple of her oh specials too. <laughs> You can smile for a sec again. I'm going to use the tightness of the lip to apply the majority of the color first, like this. We could stop there and give you a geisha lip. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> now let me grab a liner. And this one is? This one's called Really Red, and it's from Ben Nye. How much do they range for? The Ben Nye pencils, I think, are ten dollars. Okay, here we can even. Okay, I don't always think a lip and liner is necessary, but with a bold lip, like with a red, for instance. I usually always use it then if I want to create a really polished looking lip. And also when you have such a strong color like red, if your lips aren't symmetrical, like if the top is bigger than the bottom or vice versa, you're going to notice that a lot more with a bold color on the lip. So that's when you can really get in there with a pencil and start to create the symmetry that you want and start to really create the shape that you want to see on that lip. What's your ethnic background? I'm Latina. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> Especially once I got this red lip on, I'm like, girl, you are Latina. I'm Puerto Rican, but my mom was born in New York City, so she's a New York Rican. Okay, cool. And my father's from South America, Ecuador. Okay. What a mix, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's funny, my, my neighbors who live below me, well, if they have a kid, it'll be the same because she's Puerto Rican and he's Ecuadorian. And then slightly open again. And then like that. Or just more like that, uh, like tighten it. Kind of, yes, yes. That's funny, I went to this um, Latina uh, beauty class recently. Mm -hmm. I love, as long as I've been doing makeup, I still love to go take education and see the way other people do things. Um, and it was so awesome because 
the instructor first went through and, and really talked about what it means to be Latina and the difference between being Latina and Hispanic um, and just the cultural references to it and the classic look and especially like, you know, the, the dark mascara and the red lip, um, which I love in general. And then she went through and did a model, but she did more of like a smoky eye and a nude lip. And I'm like, that is not what I was expecting at all. I was like, where is that red lip? You, you got to come up there. all about Latina and how this red lip is a staple and Selena and all these references. Selena, right? With this beautiful red lip. And then she goes through and she did a smoky eye with no red lip. I was, and then it was fine, but it was so not what I was expecting and ready for and thought we were going to do. You had to go up there. And then just hold it for just a sec. I want to just check out the symmetry. Good, looks really nice. You have such great lips. Wow. Good. So this really, this could be right. <laughs> this could really be the point where you're just done. You know, get your stim oh, looking wow. good. Get the last looking good. 